Hi there. Now what I've got here is a follow-up video on the previous video where we looked at proof by exhaustion and proof by deduction. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with that. If not, do go back and check it out. So I've got a couple of examples here that you might want to try. In the first one, we've got show that the cube numbers of 3 to 7 are a multiple of 9 or one more or one less than a multiple of 9. And in the second example, we've got show that all cube numbers are a multiple of 9 or one more or one less than a multiple of 9. So if you'd like to have a go at this, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you might want to fast forward just to check your solution against mine. Otherwise, I'm going to take you slowly through the uh, work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, for the first one, this is done by proof by exhaustion because we should be able to write down all the cube numbers from 3, that's 3 cubed, 4 cubed, 5 cubed, 6 cubed and 7 cubed and check that there are a multiple of 9 or one more or one less than a multiple of 9. So if you do that, starting with say 3 cubed, 3 cubed turns out to be 27 and you can see it's a multiple of 9. And then if you do 4 cubed, it's 64, it's a multiple of 9 plus 1 more. If we go to 5 cubed, it's 125 and it turns out to be a multiple of 9 minus 1. And when we go to 6 cubed, we find that the pattern repeats here. It's a multiple of 9. And when we do 7 cubed, 343, it's a multiple of 9 plus 1. And so you can see the pattern is cycling through. If we looked at 8 cubed, you'd find it's a multiple of 9 minus 1, this entry here. And the next one would be 9 cubed, which would be a multiple of 9. So we've exhausted all the values that we have got between 3 to 7 here. And we've seen that they're either a multiple of 9 or a multiple of 9 plus 1, or a multiple of 9 minus 1. So we need to make a conclusion, and we can say that so the cube numbers from 3 to 7 are a multiple of 9, or one more, or one less than a multiple of 9. Don't forget to put that conclusion in. OK, now when it comes to number 2, show that all the cube numbers are a multiple of 9, or one more, or one less than a multiple of 9, well, we have to do this a different way. We have to use proof by deduction. So with this, we're relying on an algebraic method. And I'm going to let n be a positive integer. Now, when I have got this laid out like this, it does give me a little idea of how to tackle this. Because I notice that the multiples of 9 directly are 3 cubed then 6 cubed, and it will be 9 cubed next. So I can sense then that this is based on looking at, say, 3n all cubed. That would give me those values. So if I start off by thinking about 3n all cubed, I can see that when n is 1, we're going to get 3 cubed. When n is 2, we're going to get 6 cubed. And n is 3, we're going to get 9 cubed, and so on. But what about the other ones like 4 cubed, 5 cubed, 7 cubed, 8 cubed, and so on, and the ones before here, 1 cubed, 2 cubed? Well, I know that if I subtract 1 from 3n, I'm going to get the one before. So that would be looking at 3n minus 1 all cubed. And if I subtract 2, I'm going to get 3n minus 2 all cubed. So can you see that when n is 1, we end up with 1 cubed. This one is 2 cubed. And this one will be 3 cubed. And when n is 2, we now get 4 cubed, 5 cubed, 6 cubed, and so on. So all I need to do now is just expand each of these brackets and check out to see whether I can 
factorize it with a common factor of 9 or factorize part of it, part of the expressions with 9 and then see if I add 1 or subtract 1 on the end. Well starting with this one, 3n all cubed, this is nice and straightforward because 3n all cubed is going to be 27n cubed or 9 times 3n cubed. So if you just put that in, can you see because we've got a common factor here of 9, it must be a multiple of 9 because 3n cubed, if n is a positive integer, will be now a positive integer and a multiple of 9. Now it's a little harder when we come to these two. Not too hard, but uh, it's going to require a bit more time and thought. We need to expand this, 3n minus 2 all cubed, and the same applies to 3n minus 1 all cubed. And when you expand these, you might want to just write out 3n minus 2 times 3n minus 2 times 3n minus 2 and work through it that way. Or you could use the binomial expansion. It's up to you. Well, I've used the binomial expansion. And if you do that, then for 3n minus 2 all cubed, you get this expression here. And clean this up, you end up with this expression. And now, can you see that 9 is a common factor across these first three terms? And if you pull 9 out across those three terms, then you're going to get something like this. Although you might notice that in the end, because we have this minus 8, what I've done is I've done 9 times minus 1, which would be minus 9, and then add the 1, which gives me the minus 8. And because n is a positive integer, this will be a positive integer. So we now have 9 times a positive integer, so we've got a multiple of 9, plus one more. So we can say that this is one more than a multiple of 9. And you can check this out. When n is 1, you're going to end up with 1 cubed, which is going to be 9 times 0 plus one more, okay? When n is two, you're going to end up with four cubed. And you can see four cubed gives nine times seven plus one. This will be nine times seven plus the one more down there, and so on. Now, when it comes to three n minus one all cubed, I'm gonna do it a similar way. Rather than expanding out all the brackets, I'm gonna use the binomial expansion. And if you do that, you'll end up with this expression here. And then if you simplify this, you get this expression. And now, can you see that over the first three terms, 9 is a common factor? So we can draw that 9 out, and then we have the minus 1 on the end. This will be an integer, so we've got a multiple of 9 minus 1. So if we put that statement in, we can say that so it's 1 less than a multiple of 9. And this is going to be true when n equals 1. That's going to give us 2 cubed, okay, which is 8. So you're going to have 9 times 1 minus 1. Okay? And when n is 2, this is going to be 5 cubed. And you can see it turns out to be 9 times 14 minus 1, which you'll get here, and so on. So by this method, I've been able to show that all cubed numbers are a multiple of 9, or one more, or one less than a multiple of 9. And don't forget to write that conclusion in. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea on how to do this. Well done if you got it right. But uh, if not, hopefully, as I say, you can see how to do it now.